And now, stay tuned for the program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the whistler's strange story, Fateful Reminder. Phil Alexander slammed the phone receiver down angrily, ignored the puzzled look on Elaine Clyde's face, and slowly studied the room in which the two of them sat. It was Phil's own office, his reward for 15 years of service in the interest of Minnix, distinguished jewelers. And now he was proprietor James Minnix's right-hand man. He was also the favorite of wealthy women, women like Elaine Clyde, seated across the desk from him. But that wasn't all about Phil Alexander. No. The phone call he'd just completed was a far more accurate yardstick of what he was really like, down inside. That call from Al Farino, reminding Phil of a $10,000 gambling debt. Phil, what on earth's the matter? Hmm? Oh, nothing, Elaine, really. Another client? As demanding as I am? No, no, nothing like that. Uh, about the ring mounting, do you like it? I do, very much. Your designer does such distinguished work. Aren't you going to talk me into buying it? You know, I didn't ever want you to buy anything. That doesn't please you. No, of course you don't, dear. Well, I'm afraid you're not in a joking mood tonight. That phone call really distressed you, didn't it? Oh, now, please don't you worry about it. I shan't. And I'm going to get your mind off it, too. I'm having a little party tomorrow night. Suppose you come and make it a success. Tomorrow night? Hmm, sounds fine. I'll be there. At 8, Phil, dear. Until tomorrow night, then. Tomorrow night. Uh, Mr. Alexander. What? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice doll. She looks expensive. Who are you? Relax, Mr. Alexander. Felino sent me over. Oh, look, you can't come in here, my place of business. But I did come in. You see, Farino don't like phones banged up in his ears, and he wants his dough. Where does he think I'm going to get it? Well, that's not his problem. Tell you what, though. I'll give you a lead. Why don't you bring the doll that just left down to the tables tonight? We can fix it so she'll drop at least 10 Gs. Then you'll be square. Oh, hey, you. uh... Get out of here. Okay. It's your life, Buster. Till Friday night, anyway. Friday night? Yeah, 11 sharp. Farino's place. Oh, but Farino I'm said... telling you what Farino said Friday night at 11. You pay up or... <laughs> it pay off, Mr. Alexander. You stand there, watch him saunter off. And yet this anonymous little man has served you with what might be a death warrant. You try to imagine what Elaine Clyde's reaction would be if you suddenly asked her for a loan of $10,000. And your employer, James Minnick. You know what he'd do if he had any idea that his trusted assistant even knew anyone involved with gambling. Oh, Phil, will you come into the office a minute? Hmm? Oh, yes, Mr. Minnick, right away. Odd chap you were just talking with. A possible new client? Oh, no, I don't think so. I'm afraid our prices are too high for him. Hmm. Frankly, I hope they are. Well, come on in a moment. All right, sir. Uh, Elizabeth, hold the phone calls, will you? Of course, Mr. Minnick. 
Sit down, Phil. Sit down. Oh, thank you, sir. I, uh, I wanted to talk with you before the annual employees' dinner tonight. Oh? Something, uh, rather startling has come up, Phil. Startling, sir? Yes, that's a small word for it. I suppose there's no easy way to say this. Uh, you know what a stickler I am for personal honesty, integrity. I... Yes, of course I do, Mr. Minnick. I can't afford to have people working for me whose integrity I no longer respect. What are you trying to say, Mr. Minnick? What would you say, Phil? If you thought one of your most trusted employees was no longer worthy of your trust. I... I don't know. I guess there isn't much to say. If you don't have a new car, then, like most of us, you no doubt wish you did. Well, here's a tip. The next best thing to a spankin' new car is a car of any age powered with Signal Ethyl gasoline. Yes, the premium grade of Signal's famous go-farther gasoline is a true super fuel, scientifically engineered to bring out the best in any car of any age. And when I say best, I mean the kind of performance many drivers never thought their cars capable of. I mean pickup, the thrilling kind that makes the back of the seat come up and nudge you forward. And I mean power, the kind that hoists you smoothly, easily over hills that used to call for shifting. Now, don't get the idea, of course, that Signal Ethel's going to let you step away from all new cars. After all, smart new car drivers use Signal Ethel, too, to bring out all the exciting performance that's built into today's power-packed high-compression motors. But of this you can be sure. The next best thing to a new car is your car powered with Signal Ethyl gasoline. It's difficult to believe, isn't it, Phil? But apparently James Minnick has discovered your association with Al Farino. You stand there stunned, unable to speak, your mind spinning, wondering if your employer also knows of the $10,000 you must pay Farino, and soon. And as he speaks, you realize Mr. Minnick is looking at you and watching your face. I, uh, I don't blame you for looking so surprised, Phil. I found the knowledge that one of my trusted employees was stealing... Almost incredible myself. What are you going to do? (sighs) Nothing immediately. In matters of this kind, it's important to be absolutely certain of the facts. Yes. I want to be very sure. Excuse me, Mr. Minnick. Uh, Yes, Elizabeth? I'm sorry to disturb you, sir, but there's a man outside about the employee's banquet tonight. He said you wanted to go over the final arrangement. Oh, uh, that's right, I do. Uh, All right, in just a moment. Yes, sir. I, um, I'd appreciate it if you wait for me, Phil. I think it might be a good idea if you and I went to the employees' dinner together. If I don't get a chance to see you before then, we can finish our talk afterwards. Certainly, Mr. Minnick. I'll wait for you. You can't run, can you, Phil? You know if Mr. Minnick has found you out, no amount of running away can save you. Because if Mr. Minnick doesn't find you, Farino will. Mr. Minnick is unable to see you again before the annual employee's dinner. And as it progresses, you toy with your food. Half listen as Mr. Minnick delivers the familiar speech he makes every year about the rewards of honest endeavor, the value of personal integrity. But then something he says pulls you up short. Now, this is more than just our annual dinner tonight. It's, uh, well, it's an occasion. I've been advised by my physician to take a few months off. Mrs. Minnick and I are sailing to Hawaii. And while I'm gone, I'm placing the full responsibility of the store in the capable hands of Phil Alexander. Well, well, how about a word, Phil? Why, I... I don't know what to say. I, Except... Well, thanks, Mr. Minnick. I... <laughs> Never mind, Phil. Just to know you'll be here while I'm gone is all I need to know. And now, everybody, we're here for some fun. Enjoy yourselves. There's music for dancing. Everything you want. Go ahead. 
Have a good trip, Mr. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Or must I call you Mr. Alexander now? Phil's fine with me, Elizabeth. Oh, uh, excuse me, Elizabeth. Uh, I'll send Phil back to the party in a moment. I I want to give him some fatherly advice right now. Of course. We won't be long. Well, Phil, surprised? I certainly was, sir. I... I hope you enjoy your trip, Mr. Minnick. You've earned a rest, all right. Yeah, that's what Mrs. Minnick says. We'll sail this Saturday. Uh, and now, Phil, that, uh, that dishonesty matter I brought up late this afternoon. Oh, yes. My timing was none too good. But I had to share it with someone I knew I could trust. I hope I didn't concern you too much. Well, I... I, I found it hard to believe, sir. I know, I know. Ordinarily, I, I wouldn't burden you with it. But uh, since you'll be in charge, I want you to keep a very close eye on Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Yes, it's shocking, shocking, isn't it? She's been with me so long. Almost as long as you, Phil. And yet, she's the only one besides myself who has the combination to the vault. Oh. You've missed some jewelry, is that it? Uh, yes, small things. Nothing really expensive yet. Uh, I, uh, I somehow find it impossible to confront her with it. Oh, perhaps she isn't guilty at all. But if she is, I want her caught, of course. Caught in the act, you mean? Yes. Now, I hate to burden you with this, Phil, but I probably won't be in the store before I leave, and after all, who else can I trust? Your mind spins again, Phil. Because even as James Minnick hands you the combination to the jewelry store vault and tells you to keep a close watch on his secretary, Elizabeth, he's handing you a solution to your own problem, isn't he? Yes. If he suspects Elizabeth and trusts you, it will be a simple matter of your word against hers. James Minnick has played right into your hands, hasn't he, Phil? And as you return to the company party, you've already a half-formed plan in your mind concerning Elizabeth. There you are, Phil. Don't oh, you think you should at least save the last waltz for your new secretary? Well, I was thinking about that, too, but... Oh, you promised the dance to Mr. Minnick. Oh, no, not quite. <laughs> You've been swimming in the punch bowl since I saw you last, huh? Oh, I was going to, but they tricked us. The punch has no punch. Pure fruit juice. Oh, how nourishing. Why, uh, Miss Elizabeth, I believe they're playing our song. I bribe the leaders. Well, shall we? <laughs> of course. Elizabeth, I know a place with a far more interesting punch bowl. You do? Mm -hmm. They fill the punch bowl with popcorn and serve you rare old native drinks like scotch and water. Sounds quaint. Oh, it is. And rare old native musicians play rare old native tunes like ragmop. Minnick shadow with a sense of humor. I don't believe it. <laughs> Let's go. I'll prove it to you. <laughs> Like your natives, Phil. Very authentic, aren't they? <laughs> you know, you really had me fooled. Oh? I didn't know you were human. <laughs> I don't believe I knew you could talk either. Except to say, yes, sir, Mr. Minnick, and yes, ma'am, Mrs. Clyde. Oh, now, look. Okay, I've gone too far. I'm sorry. Mrs. Clyde is a good client of Minnick's. It's my job to keep her that way, that's all. She's just a client, Phil? Just a client, Elizabeth. <laughs> I'd like to be able to count on that. I'd like you to. It's going well, isn't it, Phil? You're certain now you'll have no trouble with Elizabeth. Her interest in you is obvious. And for the first time in weeks, you feel sure of yourself, don't you? Late that night, as you return to your apartment, your confidence is soaring. Been out celebrating, Phil? Huh? Perino. Uh, good news travels fast, Phil. I heard about Mr. Minnick leaving you in charge of the store while he's away. That's fine, Phil. Fine. Uh, look, Farino, now that you know you'll get the 10000 can you give me till Monday? Mr. Minnick's sailing Saturday. I wouldn't want to do anything before he left town. Uh, you wouldn't, eh? No. I'll tell you something, Phil. The Friday night figure is ten grand. By Monday, it's twenty. Now, look, you can't do that. No. Try me. But it isn't going to be simple to get the ten. 
And it could get a lot more complicated if I saw Mr. Minnick before he left, couldn't it, Bill? He wouldn't do that. Why would it get you? Off the hook for punks like you who got no business playing the wheel. I want my dough Friday night, Phil. No later. He means it, doesn't he, Phil? Friday night is your absolute deadline. And Farino isn't letting you forget it for a moment. There's very little time. The next morning is Thursday. And after a sleepless night, you arrive at the store early before anyone else. In James Minnick's private office, you go immediately to the vault, quickly work the combination. There's cash on hand, yes, but not nearly $10,000. And the jewelry is all marked for delivery to clients that day. You don't dare disturb it. By mid-morning, immersed in store problems, you find yourself trembling, looking up nervously, constantly fearful that Farino or another of his men will walk in on you. It's while you're making a quick tour of the display rooms that you finally do notice a strange man loitering about. And it takes all the nerve you can summon to approach him. Yes? Oh, uh, Mr. Alexander? That's right. I uh, have a message for you. Can we talk in private? See here. I've had enough of these messages as you describe them. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And my private office is not provided for such negotiations. Now, if you'll come... Wait a minute. I don't think you understand. I understand that I want you to get out of here. Uh, look, the boss said... I know what your boss said. Tell him I'll have the money for him Friday somehow, some way. Uh-huh. Okay, Mr. Alexander. Oh, uh, one other thing. You sure you know what I'm... Certainly I know. Tomorrow night, 11 sharp at Farino's place, I'll have the 10,000. Now, get out of here. You watch him go, Phil. Curse Farino for hounding you. As you start back towards your office, go inside. You're vaguely aware Phil. that Elizabeth is speaking to you. Uh, Phil, Mrs. Clyde is on the phone. Huh? Oh, okay. If you take it on my phone, I'll hear just your end of the conversation. If you take it in Minnick's office, I'll hear both. I'll take it here. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Clyde. Hello, Mr. Alexander. My, we're so formal today, aren't we? Why, no, I... I'm kidding you, Phil. You haven't forgotten about tonight, have you? Tonight? Oh, my, you have forgotten. My party this evening, 8 o'clock. I asked you when I was in the store yesterday. Oh, yes, of course. I'll send Charles around for you about a quarter off. Is that all right with you? Yes, yes, fine. Wonderful, dear. I'll see you tonight. I look forward to it. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know, I think I like your other side better, the one I saw last night. Huh? Oh, sure. We'll have to do it often, Elizabeth. not having any fun. Of course I am, Elaine. Everyone enjoys your party. Just the same. I'm afraid you're taking your new responsibilities at the store too seriously. <laughs> Perhaps that's it. I know something that'll put that old gleam back in your eye. Come on in the library. Oh. All right. Sit down at the desk, Phil. Mm -hmm. I want you to see these in a the proper setting. The light's better there. Now you're being pretty mysterious. Oh, I mean to be. Can I trust you not to watch the combination to my wall shape? <laughs> Why, yes, I think so. Oh, believe me, I'm not worried. Now then, what do you think of these? Good heavens, Elaine. Nice, aren't they? They're unbelievable. Diamonds, sapphires, emeralds. Not many of each, of course. But I did think they might make a nice bracelet. Oh, I, I'm sure they would. Now, I want you to take them. Take them? To Jacques at the store, darling. Let him study them. Work out the bracelet design. When it's ready, I'll stop by and see it. But about the gems... Can't you keep them in the vault at the store for me? Oh, certainly. We'll be glad to. Uh, why not have Charles deliver them to Miss Patton in the morning? Miss Patton? Uh, Mr. Minnick's secretary, Elizabeth Patton. Uh, checking things in and out of the vault is her job. Even if you sent them to me, I'd have to turn them over to her. All right, Phil, if that's the procedure. I'll send them in tomorrow. Good. Now let's get back to your party, shall we? I promise you I'll be a model guest the rest of the evening. It's a break, isn't it, Phil? You know enough about gems to estimate the value of Elaine Clyde's collection. 
You'll have no trouble fencing them, you're certain of that. And the amount you can raise from one or two will more than cover your gambling debt to Al Farino. You're pleased, aren't you, Phil? Because your plan is so simple, so easy. The Clyde gems will be delivered to Elizabeth in the morning. She'll put them in the vault. And once any of them are missing, you're certain all the evidence of theft will point to her. You're at the office Friday morning, confident that you'll be able to keep your 11 p.m. appointment with Farino and keep on living in the bargain. Good morning, Elizabeth. Oh, good morning, Phil. Well, your party last night must have agreed with you. Oh, I feel fine. Uh, so fine, in fact, I'd like to have dinner with you this evening. You know, that's nice, because I'd like to have dinner with you, too. Oh, good. I'm afraid I'll have to run out on you afterward, have to have a business appointment, you see. Uh, but at least we'll have fun at dinner. I'm sure we will. We can go from work, if that's okay with you. Fine. See how agreeable I am. Mm. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, Mrs. Clyde's chauffeur is bringing some stones in this morning. It wants us to keep them in the vault for her until our designer makes them into a bracelet. You'll check them into the vault, won't you? Why, yes, of course. Have you any idea of their value? No. We'll have to have them appraised in the next day or so. Well, I'll take care of them. I've uh, got to keep some appointments for Mr. Minnick today, so I probably won't be around until dinner time. If anything comes up... Oh, my goodness, something did come up. I guess it isn't too important, but that man was around here when I came to work this morning. Man? Well, you know, the fellow you were talking with yesterday on a, a personal matter, you said. Oh. Did you talk to him? No. If he should come back, shall I tell him anything for you? Yes. Tell him hello. You spend a profitable day away from the store, don't you, Phil? Yes, you make contact with an established fence in the city. Describe the stones you'll deliver to him later that evening and get his assurance that if they are as you say, you'll easily get the $10,000 you require. Early that evening, you have dinner with Elizabeth. Send her home, see her home afterward. And then set your final plan into motion. You go directly to the store, let yourself into the darkened building, and make straight for the vault in Mr. Minnick's office. You really expect to huh? get away with that, Phil? Elizabeth, how on earth... I followed that cab, as they say, only I know a shortcut. Get away from that vault, Phil. You surely don't expect to use that gun. If I have to, and I may. You made two mistakes, Phil. First, in thinking I'd go for your sudden interest in me after all these years. And second, when you spent most of the day away from the office. You see, your Mr. Farino called to remind you of your appointment tonight. Look, Elizabeth... I'll take that box of Mrs. Clyde's, Phil. I have use for what's inside. Many sound to you, Elizabeth. You're on to me. Let's make a deal. The box, Phil, hand it over. Menick will be no concern and you little use where I'm going. Okay, I'll... I'll hand it over. You only made one mistake, Elizabeth, but that one's going to prove fatal. Well, Lieutenant? Sure adds up just as you tell it, Mr. Alexander. Funny, you say the girl worked for Minix a long time, too. Yes, right? almost as long as I have. You know, it's terrible. Mr. Minnick was suspicious of her before he left. I tried my best to watch her. That's why I had the gun ready, but... Ah, you did your best. You couldn't know she had an accomplice. Uh, didn't get a good look at him, huh? No. No, he managed to leap out past me, knock the gun from my hand. But not before... Ah, I know. Those uh, jewels her partner made off with you say they were uncut gems? Yes. Yes, that's the trouble. It'll be very difficult to trace them. Ah, possible, probably. But don't feel badly. Mr. Minnick's insurance will cover the stones. Wouldn't have covered your life, though. Yes, you're right. I could have been much worse off if it had happened differently. Much worse off. How long will your car last? How long will your car last? Well, this much is certain. If you could reduce engine wear 50%, your car should last a lot longer, shouldn't it? And now you can do just that. Reduce engine wear due to lubrication 50% with wonderful new Signal Premium Motor Oil. 
Think what this can mean to you in extra savings, extra driving pleasure. Thanks to new Signal Premium, your car should now run twice as many miles before needing an overhaul due to engine wear. If your car is not already an oil eater, new Signal Premium should help you enjoy low oil consumption twice as long. And speaking of price, although most things have gone up, 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 this superior heavy-duty type oil that gives you all these extra benefits has not been increased in price at signal stations. So if you want to keep expenses down and your car's performance up for a long time to come, you know the oil to change to. New Signal Premium. You know where to get it. At Signal Service Stations. It went very well, didn't it, Phil? With James Minnick having warned you of his suspicions of Elizabeth, it seemed to the police as if you had caught her in the act of theft. There is no suspicion that it was the other way around, that Elizabeth interrupted you and that you killed her. You've convinced the police Elizabeth had an accomplice and that he managed to escape with the uncut gems belonging to Elaine Clyde. You feel certain of success now, particularly after having disposed of the jewels to a local fence. The money is nestled in your inside coat pocket, ready for payment of your gambling debt. And it's shortly before 11 p.m. You're right on schedule as you enter Al Farino's gambling establishment. I'm the black number, ladies and gentlemen. The black this time. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. Go ahead. Right on time, Farino. Yeah, I see. And here's your money. No. See, your lackey is on hand to count it for you. You're so right, Mr. Alexander. I'll say something for this boy, Farino. He was more polite than that first one you sent. Yeah. Actually, he seemed concerned about my being upset, worried. I was worried, Mr. Alexander. Worried and very puzzled. Uh, I got news for you, Phil. This is not my boy. Huh? What are you talking about? He's a cop. Your boss was worried about you because of that Elizabeth thing. Thought she might give you some trouble. Uh, Mr. Minnick called headquarters, asked us to look in on you from time to time. And you weren't sent by Al here. I put you on the track myself. You sure did. I've had you tailed since that day in the store. I don't believe it. You wouldn't have let me kill her. We were too late to stop you, that's all. Didn't know she'd walk in on you. Too bad. But now we've got all the answers. And they add up to murder. signal for the signal oil program the whistler each sunday night at this same time before you start your vacation trip be sure to ask your signal dealer for a free copy of lane's guide a booklet prepared by an independent travel organization to help you find good eating and lodging places while no pocket-sized booklet can include all the good hotels motels and dining places lane's guide covers a representative selection in hundreds of cities and towns and a copy of this handy publication is yours free at signal stations Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, John Stevenson, Betty Lou Gerson, Virginia Gregg, Ed McDonald, Ted Von Els, and Sidney Miller. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Margaret Solenston, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for the Horace Height Show, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.